on that game. But Gambit pulled out a big victory. <laughs> Thank you so much. Deficio, he's got a lot to say. Glad to have him back. We have a lot to say as well. Let's start at the, well, picks and bans, because honestly, in the beginning, it did seem like Gambit was giving up a little bit too many power picks. Yeah, I really think that the comp of Gambit was really trash, but and uh, Giant's comp was super good, but they just like picked four lanes and Diamond was just camping the top jungle warding or whatever, and then it was just a cover shard show. I feel like Giant's composition was good up until the last pick. I think, as Deficio said in the game, Gambit was telling, or Giants were telegraphing what they were doing. Gambit was telegraphing what they were doing, but then the last pick, the Diana for the Giants, I really feel it should have just been a champion that could wave clear, go even in the mid lane, allow Giants to play around their strong side, and then eventually, even if the Rumble Fizz matchup is losing, just teleport him down and try to die at the bot side. I feel Giants really dropped the ball on that because we saw early in the game, Betsy was constantly pushing in Pepinero. He was getting a little agitated, eventually lost his tower, and we saw in the player cams as well, he was getting upset. Whirlup, he was playing aggressive and constantly dying while his bot lane was actually winning. So I really feel it was too much of the same, too much of this dive skirmish type of thing when they could have just picked a wave clear mid, relied on the fact that Kalista will always beat Corky in lane in this matchup if you put some jungle pressure there. And the opposite happened for Gambit. They were behind in bot lane, but they didn't care. They just played passive, you know, stay even. And the other side of the map was winning because Betsy was pushing in mid lane, Cabochard was destroying top lane, and in between that, just like Cyan I just said, Diamond Pox was just warding and just putting control in top side of the map. Yeah, let's uh, break it down phase by phase when it's coming to this game. You started by mentioning the bottom lane, of course. We had there Alistar, Callista versus um, the Corky and the Bard, who you love so much. But it didn't go well for the Gambit at um, well from the start in there. Yeah, and that, that manifested eventually in a first blood, and that's our first replay. We can already get that on your screen and, and talk a bit about that. Just this matchup, if Bard and Corky kind of want to push and poke, but they're at risk of always getting flashed on by the Alistar eventually and getting aggressed on, especially if Rek'Sai is like joining you from the from your backside and you can't ward everything. So Forgiving gets flashed on and at this point it's over right now. Even if he flashes out, Rek'Sai will come in and clean up. And that, that's kind of the, the, the problem for Gambit. They didn't do a camp or they got help, got help on the camp, but they were pushing in. Sets up for a very easy gank and they didn't play passive enough on their weak side. This is a mistake by Gambit, but they learned from it. Forgiven never died again in this laning phase. He played passive. He said, okay, my job in this game is to go even. I let Cabochard carry. I let Betsy put some pressure. They two-man invade, force Pepinero out of the game, and it snowballed. Yeah, and Diamond as well, just like probably 30 seconds before that, he saw Rek'Sai on the blue. He stopped him from doing the blue, putting pressure. Like, that's a really good move because then you see where the jungler is. He even warded the blue, so it's pretty obvious Rek'Sai is going to go like both sides, and they still died. Yeah. yeah, that was a tiny mistake from Gambit, but they adapted. I feel like Giants were constantly making the same mistake over and over again. Yeah, one of those mistakes that got made over and over again was in the top lane. Didn't have to go for the lane swap. They had to rumble. First time there's uh, this split going on there for Whirlip versus Fizz. And on average, Whirlip is up 15 CS by 10 minutes. He has not been behind in CS at 10 minutes in this split, but he was down 30 at 10 minutes versus Kabushard's Fizz, who, as said, got a little bit of help or a lot by both his mid laner and his jungle. But it seems like, why do you keep giving that up? And and allowing that game to slow ball, snowball out of control for the enemy top laner. I just think Giants lost track of the plan and Gambit stuck to their plan. I mean, we're constantly highlighting these mistakes here uh, from the Giants side, but we have to compliment, of course, Gambit on how they decisively stuck to what the idea was in the game, right? Get these two solo in his head, supplement that with a poke jungler, eventually take the towers. And that manifested eventually in that sick play or like the skirmish in the bot lane, the bot lane party. And that's the second replay. We can get that on your screen as well right now. That's where finally... Giants, uh, Giants lost control of the game and, and Gambit ended up winning it. Yeah, here we see the fight. Ghost of Pepper just is disengaging with the Bard ult and then Fizz gonna TP in soon. As you can see, they see it as well, uh, backing off, but it's just too late at this point. Fizz is like ultra strong and Diana is like not doing anything. What neither is Diamond, but yeah. still, Lulu is just massive coming in. Yeah, you see Diamond Bugs dueling Nidalee, uh, doing the Pepinero on the top lane, and this allows Betsy to roam, and once he comes in, he has so much. Crown control, and as you just said, like Fizz in the backline. Once you let Kabushar te teleport in the backline with that item advantage already, it's just so hard to win that fight. And Gosu Pepper, he did what he had to do. He bought some time with the Tempered Fate, and that was like the final play. That at that point, the game was pretty much over. And control finished by Gambit. Last week against Copenhagen Wolves, it took them so long to close. It was slow. It was messy. It wasn't organized. And we see again progression from Gambit. So things are looking good. Uh, definitely very fast to close that out. As a footnote, Cabo Shore 92 kill participation at the end of that game, highest this split. So, well, that is definitely a good pick for him coming out. As for us, we're going to take a short break as Elements is Rock at set up on stage. But stay tuned, the action continues right after this.
Okay, uh, Capo, you need the vision. Mm. I need what? Hey, Capo, you need the movement speed. Mm. Hey, forgive and wake up. Hey, wake up. Oh, he is burning away, and Frederick will come in and snipe him with the Prey Seeker. Now they're going in on a Gosu Pepper. He won't last long. Betsy moving around the side, and he picks him up. Audrey's gone down, and now the Wild Growth on Betsy as the Equalizer is thrown down. That's they don't cow. have the damage in there. Is the cow thrown in? Diamond Brox chunked out, taken down by Audrey, but Giants are going to pay dearly. Gambit Gaming, pick up another.